as we age as women, our brain becomes less sensitive to glucose and more sensitive to ketones. So I want to ask if you if you are you find the same thing and does I mean, of course, I have to go into the fasting realm. Have you seen as women and, and this probably works for men, too, as we age, the more we can get some of those ketone hits, the healthier our brain is as we go through those years. Unequivocally, in my clinical practice, in my experience, getting into ketosis is one of the most miraculous interventions for cognitive decline. Yeah, It do. is a game changer. And I think it yeah. does about 50% of the heavy lifting of everything that we do. Now, if yeah. there's a smoking gun, like a ton of mercury or a ton of mold toxicity or a severe B vitamin deficiency, right? We, we need to find that, right? That's important. The functional medicine perspective of this, I think, is important. Yeah. Now, that being said, I don't think anyone should be in ketosis forever, right? I, I'm right. wearing a continuous yep. glucose monitor yeah, me right too. now. <laughs> yeah. 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 I So... I think like what nine out of 10 diseases associated with aging or chronic conditions associated with aging have to do with high blood sugar, right? We have created yeah. a society where we're sick, we're obese and sick and have diabetes and a heart disease and cognitive decline because of the amount of processed food that we consume and particularly the amount of sugar. And these blood sugar swings and spikes, they are so detrimental to sleep, to mood, to energy levels, to so many of the other downstream things. And so absolutely what we see, I have patients who have gone from not being able to remember their grandchildren's names to being totally incontinent to three days later, 72 hours is about what it takes to get into ketosis with a significant carbohydrate restriction. And we see that they remember their grandchildren's yeah. names and they have control of their bladder and bowels. I mean, it is profound. And it, people... Yeah. My personal experience with ketosis, I get an hour and a half back in my day because I wake up at 5 a.m. ready to go. I don't have to go through that kind of groggy 6 to 6.30, like I need my matcha kind of vibe. I yeah. can just get started with my meditation and my morning routine, and I don't. there's no delay. And I also, my mood yeah. is better. My sleep is on my aura ring. I can track it. My sleep improves. My deep sleep improves. My HRV improves, and you can, I just get off the roller coaster. So many people can relate to this. Also, the yeah. bloating goes away, right? The, the, I, my stomach is flat again, you know, just aesthetically, it yeah. feels great. So yeah. we guide people into ketosis. And I recommend for anyone struggling with cognitive decline, three to six months solidly in ketosis, and then going back and forth between potentially a plant-based diet or a paleo Mediterranean diet, still a non-processed diet when you're going back and forth. Now, trips to Italy happen. I want you to enjoy that. Weddings happen. I want you to enjoy yeah. that. So people come off. And I think that's okay. It's all about being in the mindset that if I'm at genetically at risk or if I'm symptomatically feeling like my cognition is not optimized, I need to get back into ketosis and I need to spend more time in ketosis than not. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for saying that because it's been interesting being in the keto world. I've been in this world for a long time and there have been a lot of critics of ketosis. And the way I like to get people into ketosis is through, is through the door of fasting. Like just take that window, compress it so you have this longer period of fasting and then clean up your food in that eating window. And if you go low carb in that eating window, you're going to go into even deeper ketosis. And this is why Fast Like a Girl was written was because so many people were like, no, this isn't good for women. This isn't good for women. And, and I'm like, really? Because I got 80 year olds that are dropping weight. And like you said, remembering their childhood phone number because I put them in ketosis. And so I don't know if there's like a media attempt to keep people out of ketosis because then they'll need drugs for some reason. But I have seen the same thing across hundreds of thousands of people that if you take a menopausal woman, if you take an aging woman and you put her into ketosis, you give her her brain and body back. And I think it's something we should be shouting from the rooftops. Now, the second thing I wanna say is when you balance somebody's metabolic health, you also balance their immune system. So when we look at those infections you're talking about, if I can get them metabolically healthy, I can get their immune system up. And when I can balance their 
their metabolism and get that hemoglobin A1C down, I can also see that they need less bioidenticals. That I think is the wild, wild west right now. I believe, I believe in us all getting on them, but there's a huge learning curve for women when they get on these bioidenticals. So we have to pair the lifestyle to that. So, you know, I think, and I'm a question for you, is every woman should start this keto journey when the hormones start to go crazy in those perimenopausal years, like at 40. And would you say there's a time that you just stop ignoring that ketones are this driving fuel source for your brain and you really need to embrace a lifestyle that brings ketones back in? So I think that all humans should go in and out of ketosis. That's what we're designed to do. We're essentially hybrid engines and our ancestors, the, the consistent thing about an ancestral diets was inconsistency. We didn't have blueberries in yes, December. thank you. And so we, we had meat available in the winter that was you know stored or frozen or salted or whatever it was, but we didn't have abundant amounts of carbohydrates available 365 days a year. It just wasn't how our bodies were designed. And now we are overfed. And so it's really important that we get inconsistency in our diet, and this is part of fasting. Now, that being said, with it, what might be good for you if you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, might not necessarily be good for mom or grandma because there is mm -hmm. weight loss associated with ketosis and we don't wanna go in the direction of frailty. Now, there are great ways to mitigate that and, and we have tons of resources, I'm sure you do as well, but going into fasting plus ketosis for someone who's already frail, it can be a little bit too much sometimes. So we wanna right. build resilience. This is that hormetic effect, right? We're, we're stressing the system by going into either into fasting or a fasting mimicking state with ketosis. And what we wanna do is stress the system so that it's more resilient. This is a, a definition of health, right? Is more resilience when we come in, uh, in, into contact with any sort of stressor. Now, that being said, if someone's frail, if that, that stress can lead to decompensation a little bit quicker. So for those of us in, you know, in this perimenopausal range, I would say it's better to start even earlier, right? There, I think women in their 20s mm. and 30s can get mm. tremendous benefits from going into ketosis. They, in terms of hormonal regulation, right, this insulin, insulin resistance can start early, uh, depending on what lifestyle and diet habits have been. But PCOS is something that I think can be really yes. supported through fasting and ketogenic diet and getting the sugar down. You mentioned the connection between ketosis and, and metabolism and addressing metabolism and how it impacts the immune system. Sugar feeds cancer. Sugar yeah. feeds candida in the gut. But not just that, it feeds the gingivitis in your, in your gums. It feeds every other infection. So getting the sugars down that starves out these infectious agents and you can really reduce that burden significantly directly, right? And then you also get all of these okay. other benefits. You mentioned the conversation with Lisa Moscone and how all of us, regardless of our diabetes status, regardless of our fasting insulin or our blood sugar, fasting blood sugar, as we age, we become less sensitive to glucose in our brain. Our brain prefers ketones to sugar. And again, I think back, not that I was there, but to ancestors. But what were yeah, our I ancestors? Yeah, I think back all the time. We, maybe we were there. We've been maybe reincarnated. We were. <laughs> so, <laughs> but if we were running from a bear, if we didn't have food, shelter, or water, if we didn't have that food, we didn't need our brains to turn off. We actually needed them to turn on. And so when we get into a fasting mimicking state because there's food scarcity, right? This, this is contrived in our day and age, but if the way it was for our ancestors, our brains turn on. Yes. And it's this ancestor, it's this evolutionary it's like design, right? It's just a divine design that if we are on the edge of starvation or going in that direction, we need to be able to think clearly, find food, find what we need, find the resource we need. And so that happens. That's, we have the benefit of that now. And we yeah. just have to put, yes, it, it can be somewhat uncomfortable, but the rewards are so worth it. They're so worth it. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you do it this way too, is like when I have a day where I need my brain to be on, that's when I fast. It's like, I need those ketones because they work so much better than, than glucose when I need that sharpness.